All right. Now, the rules have not, as I said, have not been written. I just got back from the Conference of Bishops. We had our academy. We had our continuing education. We had two days where we had set aside to have conversation with vocation and education and with the Office of the Secretary, with Dave Swartling. I feel much better about our mutual understanding about what we actually did in Minneapolis, far better than when I left in October. Because what I understand that we did is that we did not change the policy and practice, but we expanded it. That we're going to continue to allow bishops, pastors, congregations, candidacy committees to continue to hold the position they had before August and live out their convictions in this church. Now, if you have four positions that are pretty much opposed to one another, that gets to be pretty interesting. So, for example, the one place where I actually have power, I talk about the office of bishop, is one that has lots of authority and almost no power. I can talk really big, which, and it helps when you're 6'5", but with push coming to shove, I really don't have much in the way of actually getting stuff done if I want to, except for one place, and that's on reinstatement, which means is that if a pastor or a roster leader has gone off the roster of the ELCA, they have to wait five years before they can reapply, and then they have to make application to the candidacy committee, and then they also have to come and see me. And if I decide no, that they cannot come back on the roster of this church, my no is final. They cannot appeal it to the Synod Council. They can't appeal it to the Synod Assembly. They can't go to the Church Council, the Churchwide Council. My no is final. And that, that has been true, and I believe it will continue to be true as these new rules are written. So we had good clarity at this last January meeting that if I as the bishop, irregardless of sexual orientation, if I say no to a, a person that wants to come back on the roster, my no is still final. Is that clear? Come on. Okay. Now, the rule change, though, would be that under the new rule, and it's not done yet, but I think this is what it's going to look like. If I would only say no because I believe that homosexual behavior in this person wants to either be in a relationship or is in a relationship, if the only reason that I would say no is because I personally cannot support that, but I believe other than that, the person has the capability and the gifts needed to serve this church, then with the approval of the candidacy committee and with the Synod Council of South Dakota, we could transfer that person to a synod where two things could happen. You need to hear both of them. They would have to do the same thing. Their candidacy committee, their synod council, and their bishop would have to say yes in receiving them. But then there would also be a second question that would need to be asked. Is there a place in this synod where they could serve? Because it doesn't help to put someone back on the roster if they're not going to be able to get a call. Because finally, it is up to the congregation to decide who will come and serve them. And that is not going to change. So is that clear? Which means yes. It means no. Looking kind of out over here. Yes? You understand? Good. All right. Let's see. There was something else. Oh, one other place that there will be some flexibility is in candidacy. We will need to poll our people that serve on our candidacy committee. And we would need to be clear about two things. First and foremost, 
that if a person would come from our South Dakota Synod that would like to serve the church, they make application, we would go through the interview process, all of that. The question that we've been asking now for more than 10 years of our candidacy committee is do you want this person to have them be your pastor? Would you be willing for this person to serve as your pastor or rostered leader? The question used to be, when we first started this church, can this person serve anywhere in the church? And guess what? One could always imagine where they might be able to serve, correct? Well, that didn't work real well. And we found that the second question, or the one I talked about, would you want them to be your pastor or rostered leader, is a much better question. So first and foremost, would you want them? And secondly, could they serve in this synod? That would be the second question one would need to ask. Because right now, no matter where they get placed in the church, if they don't get a call in one year, they come back to their synod of origin. So even if someone from South Dakota got placed, say, in Texas, if after a year they can't get a call in Texas, they come back and they're our responsibility. Is that clear? All right. So we would need to be clear up front with a candidate. If we have a candidacy committee that would either because of personal belief or because of their understanding of this synod, would need to say to a candidate, you need to go somewhere else. And there would be some provision uh, that would be able to make that happen so that they could be assigned to a synod that would, one, be able to look after them during the educational process and finally be able to receive them and have them be able to work. Now, everywhere I've gone since August, I've had people have, who have had questions about whether or not their congregation is going to be forced to call a gay lesbian pastor in a committed relationship. And for now, about five months, I've been saying no, but everywhere I go, almost the first question I get is, are we going to be forced? So the answer is, you will not be forced to call anyone. And then someone always, always immediately asks, isn't there a federal rule that says you cannot discriminate on gender, race, sexual orientation, and the answer is yes, there is a federal law. So you need to hear this, especially if you're council president. If you're hiring a secretary or a custodian and you ask them about their sexual orientation and you do not hire them because of the answer they give, you're in big trouble. You could not ask a custodian or a secretary that question. They maintain those rights under the federal statutes. But guess what? If you're on the roster of this church or any other church, we relinquish that protection. To go onto the roster of this church, we give that up. In other words, we've said we can be discriminated against. 